Welcome to the Vibrant Living Network. Have you ever wondered what is possible beyond possible? What is the thing you've been wondering and inquiring about? Are you just feeling stuck and don't know why? Are you thinking or are you seeing? Seeing allows us to expand and have this other experience. We want to invite you for that wake-up call. We want to invite your spirit, your soul, so to be more alive, more connected. Glenn Brooks has been a life coach for over 33 years, author of Divorced to Patterns, Not Each Other, an explorer of what is possible. He has worked with people all around the world. Join us for a wake-up conversation, a dialogue with you. We will have some of the most interesting contributors. We will be talking to some of the most interesting people and have some of the most resourceful teachers, wisdom-filled people from around the world join us. Share your voice, ask the questions, become free of the known into a new world of possibility. We are going to talk about all the things you wonder about, how to live, how to heal, how to connect, how to love, how to be seen. Your life is precious. Enjoy it. It's wonderful being with you today. Welcome to the Vibrant Living Network. I'm Glenn Brooks. And uh, I was just thinking today about styles of thinking and kind of there's linear thinking, right? The linear thinking, the way we, we tend to think about stuff, the way we, we look at stuff. And I realized at a certain point in my life, I – it was almost like I had the sense I was in, in the horizontal or in linear thinking, and there was this other world, this other thing that was kind of – I was hearing about and noticed. And every so often, it would kind of come to me. It was, it was like something – I'd read something. So I remember reading – because we're doing this series on being paid for who we are, being paid for who we are. I remember one day I must have been uh, doing my best to leave school. That was one of my practices, to leave school as often as I can. Because I felt my uh, my spirit would kind of dwindle there, and I read this quote by Mark Twain. And he said that true success is turning your vocation into your vacation. True success is turning your vocation into your vacation. And I loved being in the woods, and I would what I would do is I'd walk in the woods. And when I read that, it was kind of a, like a, an interruption, a welcome interruption, because I thought, wow, that's truly really, that means something. You know, that sort of means something, and. Uh, I had a health crisis, you know, at the time. I was having a health crisis. And this is before I even knew I was, you know, in the world of coaching. I didn't really I didn't really know. You know, you, you have a sense that you're in a direction, but it's not it's not where, you're, where you could be or, or um, what you could access. And so I I went to the uh, I went to the bookstore and I found this magazine and I I read an article about sugar, actually. And somehow I knew I was supposed to give up sugar. I was like 17, and sugar was all around me. You know, and uh, um, was also around me was I got really curious and inquisitive because what was around me, my parents, I could feel in the household there was a certain thought system, if you will. There was a certain way of being in life, and it, it was all outward-oriented. You had to get degrees. You had to do certain things. And there was a lot of fear about that. Now, nothing was spoken, per se. Every now and again, there was. And I had went to New York City. And two things happened on my trip to New York City, because I started getting really curious about the nutritional thing. And So one thing that happened was I went to a ski show. And I went to the ski show, and uh, I told Miranda, a vibrant writer, the story. But I went to the ski show, and the... the there was a uh, a big pavilion built. So if you were if you were a good skier, you could if you were, if you were a really good skier, there was a conveyor belt uh, that looked like a, like you were skiing down a ski trail, and you had, you had to climb up stairs. It was a big like tower with a with kind of fake snow on this conveyor belt, and they were asking someone from the audience to come up and to give this a shot. And I had only skied a little bit, but I thought, wow, that must be really really hard because. It was going so fast, and it was a big, you know, thing. But I really paid attention. What was happening in my life then? I really was. I didn't know at the time. I was. I'm a lateral thinker. I was thinking differently about things. So, I'm in. I'm in my life now, and I'm changing my diet. And when I change my diet, my whole 
way of seeing almost everything changes. Because all of a sudden, I'm not eating what everybody eats. I'm feeling different. I go to this. I go to the show, and, and basically, what I noticed during that show was that this one guy that kept going up um, to attempt to ski down this thing. He he fell two or three times really badly, and the audience. I'm not going to go into the full version of the story. I'll tell you the full, full, full version sometime. But basically, on his third try, everybody was like devastated mentally that he was going up again. They couldn't believe it. And instead of falling and going to the safety net, when he fell and he got thrown back in the air from the, the conveyor belt, what looked like, if you will, snow carpet, it threw him very high in the air. And he, he did some beautiful helicopter somersault and he stunned the crowd, right? Everybody was surprised. I couldn't believe that he, he had failed. He had not made the mark. And in that moment, in that very moment, I knew I wanted to coach people. I didn't have the words, but I knew I wanted to work with people and go beyond their self image. And I knew there was something there in people that was different than they, than they, who they identified as. I knew there was a vital sensation that lived deep in people that they could access this, this vitalness. And it would, it would go beyond what they were used to in terms of identifying themselves. I somehow, I don't know if I had that language, but that was my sense of it. And uh, so the world of coaching became an alive world for me. And there was no coaches around. And uh, so kind of in honor of that, I want to... Uh, I want to welcome Maureen Clary from National Awakenings Magazine from Rhode Island, one of my my favorite places to go. So I want to welcome you, Maureen, again. Thank you, Glenn. Happy to be yeah. here. And I want, oh, I'm so happy you're here. And I want to say, uh, as part of our series, I I realize that what, what I really want to pass on to people is that relational collaboration, or I call it three different things, Maureen. I call it relational collaboration. I call it uh, infinite collaboration because it's so – it allows you to, to move past what you possibly could do on your own. It makes the journey and the process very different in terms of uh, satisfaction and connection, which I have with you. And also, it's very prosperous. It's a really prosperous thing. By the way, that was my greatest, my greatest discovery in the field of coaching by far. And I was thinking about this this morning, uh, Maureen, was that originally when I started in coaching – I didn't think about the, the process of coaching. Like, like I had a sense that we, we got hooked to the wrong, we got hooked, we got hit, hooked to thought systems, or I call them thought viruses now, that didn't serve us. But I didn't, I, I saw, I didn't see how a lot of what coaching and self-improvement and self-transformation was sort of about was about, you know, this false sense of empowerment. I didn't have the language then. And what happened in my life was, I, I had a sense in my heart that, that that relationships were profound. I knew that, that there was something so medicinal and powerful there. And I remember hearing one day uh, Dr. Ashley Montague, an anthropologist over at Princeton, he said, he said something that transformed me that day. I was, I was at my parents' house, and he said that love could heal broken bones. And I thought, wow, that's a different love. That is a... You know, when someone experiences love like that, that's so different than how most of the culture talks about love. So I remember standing there hearing that. And um, Thank you. so coaching became part of my life, became a way of life. I ran into a psychiatrist, Dr. Bob, Dr. Bob. Oh, by the way, I want to share this with people because so here it is. I'm, I'm coaching people, all kinds of people. My first client was a guy named Richard Wampeldorf. And uh, I met him, and he came to see me, and he would leave. He would leave early, and I thought, oh, people get value because they stay an hour. They say it's an hour, and he stayed for the value, and that opened me up to see things differently. And you know, this quote, by the way, by Mark Twain became part of my life because I thought, huh, it seems to me, and I'd be curious to ask you your experiences. It seems to me that when I was watching life, you know, early on, I think, oh, people seem to get worn down and tired at work, and maybe they. They have good work that lasts maybe a few hours, but then they get worn down. So I thought, hmm, I just kind of noticed that. And then I would, I remember sitting places where there was a lot of other younger people and watching adults walk by. And I thought, you know, they don't look like they move as well as us. You know what I mean? I kind of had this feeling of movement. I had this feeling of relationship. And I thought, hmm, is it really true that we need to work this many hours a week? So what was, I want to answer this. So just from a, a, a kind of a coaching perspective before we kind of dive into vibrant matchmaking, which is uh, 
my next evolution in coaching was on the, on the relational no- nature. But I want to ask you, like, what was your first, was there something in your life that was your first, like, discovery or something that impacted you in a way that kind of, you know, changed your life in a certain way? Is there anything that you could recall was instrumental? Yes. Yeah, for sure. It was when I had found the magazine that uh, I really did feel like the sky is opened and saying that uh, this was what I was supposed to be doing. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know anything about publishing the magazine. I just knew that it felt right. It felt like Mm -hmm. everything I had been looking for was just all sort of rolled into one. And uh, I, I just couldn't imagine not doing it. Wow. That that sort of so consumed. I, was, I had I had a perfectly good really? job. I was a vice I was a vice president at a bank, and I quit wow. the job so I could start the <laughs> Wow! <laughs> I didn't know that. So you kind yeah, of went. You yeah. kind of went. So you went from a conventional or very linear profession, and and it's how did that change you? How did that shift you? How, what was it like? What was it like when the sky opened and you had that that awareness when you walked into it? It was. You know, it was that wonderful combination between scared to death and super excited, knowing that you mm. were in the right place, doing the right thing, and not having yeah. the foxiest idea what you were doing. So it's a wonderful sort of uh, in-between kind of place. There's a lot yeah. of um, sweetness in that space. Wow. So what was it like for people around you? Were they encouraging? Were they? What was it like for people – around you when they said you were going to quit, you were going to leave the bank? Well, it was interesting. Mm-hmm. A lot of the, when I told a lot of my coworkers, it was mm-hmm. astonishing how many people were, uh, there was envy that they were mm-hmm. wishing that, you know, I talked to people who had were bankers and said things like, oh, I always wanted to be a lawyer, or I always wanted to be mm-hmm. a photographer, or I always wanted, mm-hmm. that there was other things that they wanted to do mm-hmm. in their life besides what mm-hmm. they were doing. So yeah, you know, one mm. one the gentleman that I gave my uh, resignation to um, <laughs> had said that he had always wanted to own an ice cream shop. So it wow. was just uh, you know just a whole wide range. Um, in my personal world, uh, everybody was very supportive. The only people mm. that which is just I found interesting mm-hmm. that there was a little resistance yeah. from was my yeah. mother and my mother-in-law, and I think huh. that their pers- and their perspective, and it's not that they, they, they were still super supportive. I think the yes, reluctance yes. was just that in their lifetimes, in their generations, people didn't quit their job to go start some half-baked magazine. Or not mm-hmm. knowing what they were doing, <laughs> right? Uh-huh. <laughs> so yeah. in their realm of experience, they just didn't have a, yeah. any kind of frame of reference for it. So they, mm-hmm. they both came around, and they're huge supporters. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. You know, um, boy, I'm always curious. Um, there was a guy who wrote a book called Twice in a Lifetime. He was 80, and he finally did something he enjoyed when he was 80. And he said it was like he could finally respirate. He could finally breathe. So I've always been curious. I've been curious. In my life, my closest relationship was my grandfather. And I just couldn't wait to move out of my parents' house and move my grandfather into condominium. I just, I just was like... And my grandmother had passed away. I never saw my grandmother stand up. She, she was diagnosed very early with a very advanced form of arthritis. And my grandfather, when he came over, they would hide the, all the sweetness, all the sweets in the house. And but I loved him so much. I kind of felt, I don't know if he was an, a, a lateral thinker or he, what was happening, but I kind of felt like he kind of, he didn't, there was something about him being patient. He was an electrical engineer. And I remember when I, he would get a new car. You'd, never, you'd see the back seat. The first day of the car, he bought it, and then you never see the back seat again. You know, all these instruments in the back seat. And he would take me out, and he he passed away uh, about four in the morning, probably four weeks after my grandmother, pretty eight, two months after my grandmother passed away. And I realized that I didn't know where, I didn't really know where home was after that. And I started to have these sinus headaches, and so it was kind of. I guess you could say I had a sense, I had a feel that, that things were going to be different. I didn't, I didn't, I was just thinking about this today, uh, Maureen, that, that the kind of coaching that I, that I do with people is very, it's like an infinity. We can imagine, imagine an infinity, how it flows, like, you know, the, the infinity kind of flows 
in that movement because I realize that we, we go through life and then we kind of, we go through different places and we reintegrate them, different stages, different awarenesses. So I wanted to, I know you told you you're going to do a news release and, and talk to people about vibrant, vibrant matchmaking. And I thought I would share with you how I, I made that discovery, which, uh, was tied to the most painful experience of my life. So my, basically I was married for about 27 years. I was, I was coaching. I, I had started something very different. I started something called vibrant speaking and I put together, I also was doing something called unscripted power, but the whole theme of, of vibrant speaking was, and I started to work with people on this. I really wanted people to allow them to be as embarrassed and awkward as they could be. As a matter of fact, I really would encourage people to allow what was holding them back to like, I want to express it, you know, like the, the things that really were holding them because they worked so hard to go past those things. And I said, no, I just, I kind of let them be. As a matter of fact, if you're nervous, be nervous. If, uh, if you feel like shaking, shake. And I would, a lot of my speaking work became about how the quality we listen to each other. So I was kind of doing that. And I could see the biggest thing that was challenging was kind of my relationship with my wife. I felt like, I felt tremendous potential. And at the same time, uh, that something was happening. There was some distance. And I took her, I took a barefoot hiking at the Omega Institute. And probably within, I don't know, three months of that experience, she came down with really bad, really intense Lyme disease. I never had been around anybody that was really that sick. But I did what I regularly did, Marie. Kind of like me, me doing, I put a, a team together. We'll continue talking about teams, collaboration, and going with another level of abundance in your life here on Vibrant Living. Maureen Clarity, Miranda Green's with us. Stay with us. Hi. The Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Ohm Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going On? My passion is sifting through information, research, and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers, and researchers pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics, and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here, and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness, and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Thursday, and together we can discover what's really going on. In the wake of a disaster, what one thing can you send that will help people the most? A blanket, a tent, a sandbag, a doctor. Actually, if you send a monetary donation, you send all these things. Even a small donation can make a big impact and can quickly become exactly what people affected by disaster need most. In the wake of a hurricane, your monetary donation can make a huge difference to those in need. To donate, visit supporthurricanerelief.org. That's supporthurricanerelief.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. You're listening to the Vibrant Living Network. I'm Glenn Brooks. I want to send a my love to Kai Cole, who's usually sitting here with me and moving and suggesting brilliant ideas and asking questions. Mexico. She wasn't able to get on the program today. Hi, Kai. We got Maureen, Maureen, Clary from uh, Natural Awakenings. Maureen's going to be our inside partner. She's going to demonstrate the power of collaboration because you know, as my teacher Wallace Waddle said, the world has teachers. Too many teachers. We need to demonstrate. We got Ariel B, homeopath, vibrant living team member, and I think I think sit down comedian. He can be really funny. He just he saves it and then he kind of releases it. So he's here, he's here with us. So I go into this. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. 
Um, so I have I go into this uh, situation with my wife. Her face basically she starts to degenerate. I've never seen this happen before. She really, she really. Um, how would I describe it? I guess the best way to describe it is she just kind of lost ability. She couldn't close her eyes at a certain point. And what I did was, I, I, there's an audio you guys can listen to. It's online. I put it up. It's called Her Beautiful Face. Her Beautiful Face. And it's all about when someone has a neurological disturbance, disease, how to really be with them in a way that intensifies that healing capacity. It, it really, we really live in a relational field with each other, and we really impact each other. And so this, uh, Her Beautiful Face was about really they wanted to do a spinal tap on Monday, and we actually she started to get facial movement. By Sunday night, she could move her right eyebrow, and the neurologist said she would she couldn't move her face for a year. So I, I share about what kind of happened in my life, and I, I really um, it stressed me because a lot of times we see things and we go with graven image. We see we we look at them a certain way, and this really opened me up, and. You know, when I had this, this, I don't know, I, the best way I could describe it to you guys, I had a relational tsunami with Donna. And what I mean by that is we had this distancing that I felt in my heart it would resolve. And I went through about a year and a half, and I didn't know, I didn't know what his heartbreak. It was a very intense heartbreak. And I was actually listening to this woman on radio who was talking about heartbreak. She was a swimmer from the Olympics. And I, sometimes what happens is we find a language. And we see something we couldn't see the day before. So I, I, I saw this. I was starting to have these. The best way I could describe them, I was having what I would call soul seeings. I was having these. They were like dreams, but I was profoundly conscious. And I started to put together a book called Divorce the Patterns, Not Each Other. A lot of people called me about the book. It was almost like people would meet me and kind of ask me about this experience. And I – so – Vibrant matchmaking came into being uh, a few years ago, and the whole basis of it was very different than what was out there in terms of in terms of empowerment and in terms of uh, dating. Because my theme, my theme, Maureen is uh, and Ariel and Miranda is that to go beyond dating to relating, to go beyond dating. So the idea of date, uh, the idea of going beyond dating is to really. I don't know, start from this basis of relating. Because I couldn't date anybody. I really knew that, that deep relating has to do with deep recognition. So that's a principle. Plus, I saw the connection between vibe and speaking because I realized that when you're really vulnerable, you could ask for things, and giving it is kind of an honor. So I realized we have all these, we have some of these uh, concepts or paradigms we don't question about relating. And I, of course, I realized when I was going through the tsunami which, which I really, little, I remember that on Father's Day, Maureen, I couldn't even stand up. I remember I was going to, I thought I'd see my wife that day. And, and the whole experience was so, it was so overwhelming and so intense. And um, so the, it was like the year before I watched her, you know, come out of Lyme disease, go past a lot of the symptoms. And I, and I realized, and this, this happens in relationships, you, you go through different places where you could actually relationally awaken together. So when I was like in my teens, I heard about I heard about a lot of spiritual things I was curious about. Like they would talk about a Kundalini awakening and people would talk about a lot of things. And what I guess you could say happened was I started to see things relationally. That relational cycles uh when a person wakes up, often they could ha they could wake up together. So that is an example of poison one of my principles is the poison in your relationship to, can be the deepest blessing in your relationship. So Vibrant matchmaking came about sort of organically because I kind of thought always that matchmaking was what I did with people. Well, like you, Maureen, people on all different levels of business and speaking. I, I love putting together teams and, uh, and I thought, wow, it's so beautiful to actually find out and discover this core sensation and, and kind of marry people, connect people around vibrancy, not as a one-time thing, but it's a regular thing. So I, I got together with a woman who wrote, actually wrote a book actually called, uh, what was it called? It was called Love Never Dies. And we had this amazing connection. And uh, I started to meet people that were questioning, because I think over the last 20 years, the 30 years, we've had this very strong personal development, personal transformation. I see the next wave being relational transformation. And since 
I'd love to get your curiosity because one of the things you, you, you gave me some feedback as I talked to you about vibrant matchmaking. What, what are you the most curious about for the new story? Because I want to start, you know, obviously I want to start coming to Rhode Island. And um, what are you curious about? Because I, I want to get the most, I want to speak to, and I want to get Miranda here. She's here. We got Ariel. What are you most curious about, Maureen, about vibrant matchmaking? I, I, I guess just how does it work? How do you mm. match? How does what does it look like? I do I do a consultation, which I call different things. It I, I've been recently I've been calling it a love invocation, but I do I do a consultation for vibrant matchmaking, and what it looks like is I ask people questions. I get a I get a sense of their. You know, sometimes what happens is I sit with someone, I get a sense of what they, let's say what they don't like. I kind of explore with them, if you will, what their life would be like in deep relationship. I ask them questions about, you know, physicality. Like, do they, what do they, when they're really open, what do they enjoy? And how do they, you know, vision? And, and what do they believe? So a consultation is a lot, a consultation, this first consultation is a lot about if they, what is this vital sensation when they feel really alive and they feel really in touch? What would they like to experience? And it's also kind of removing some of the interferences. And some of the interferences, funny enough, are a lot of beliefs or, or thought obstacles that they've learned in personal growth work. Because personal growth work focuses on the me, and this is about the we. So I, I basically sit down and I, I did a consultation last week with a woman who wants to be closer to men. And I remember giving a little, little exercise that when she saw men, she could kind of allow this sense of connection what was already there. So we kind of played with this idea that connect, that connection is something that's there. A lot of times we push it away. So it depends on the person. And then what I do is we, um, we come up with, we come up with a, if you will, a remedy or a, uh, a strategy like I was, I actually did this with a lawyer recently, and she, very well read lady, and she said to me, "Oh, she goes, what's the energy part of this?" And I said, "The energy part is noticing, noticing your body, so that you have a sense of when you're kind of pulling away, and you know, and and I, I guess what it, it's sort of a little bit, bit of a body based awareness." What 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 do you, what did I say that made you more curious, or what did I say that? <laughs> Because I'm, I'm so I'm so I'm so into thing that I want to make sure that I'm answering your 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 um, your question. No, 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 absolutely. I, so it's just, you know, right, right. So it's just a matter of sort of getting to what what it is that people are truly seeking. Well, and in a group, let's let's say let's. No, go ahead. I'm sorry, Marie. Yeah, that's what. What is it that you know, is our deepest relationship look like? So I have, I'm putting together um, a, a relational a journal. It's a vision journal for couples. So one of the things uh, when I have a group is I have people sometimes go in the room to someone they feel connection with and actually make contact with each other's toes. So because part of what happens is the way our nervous system and our, our consciousness works, we kind of get used to pushing off certain things. And so when you make a little bit of contact, that's why I tried dancing. It's so magnificent. And I'm going to have some dances. But I have people like Kenneth sit and, and <laughs> make toe contact. And I, uh, I, I might give the, I might do a, uh, what do you call, I do like a visualization. I give them a little visualization. Uh, I call them energetic visualizations. And, I kind of have the group, it's like takes maybe 10 seconds, and I have them take, I guess you could say take, take some risks. The risk might be going up to someone and, and doing, and, uh, you know, going out and getting a, a pine cone together and kind of being in sync and notice, notice what it's like when you're breathing together. Like, just notice, notice stuff that a lot of times we're uncomfortable with. And so, but within that comfort, we have this sense of connection. So as a matchmaker, and when I, when I listen to people, I kind of get a sense 
of some people and I check with other, I check, I have a little network. I kind of get a sense, oh, that'd be interesting to kind of have these two begin relating. You know, like um, maybe taking a hike or... So I kind of feel what's happening is that I'm helping people move from one world of high digital and kind of this, you know, online dating to this others, other way of kind of... I, I've come up with the term relational embodiment. So, so we embody, we get used to being have our own body, but then we embodying with someone else is kind of this other thing. Um, oh, by the way, just to say, a lot of times when people come to see me, they're pretty excited about it. They like the idea of being vibrantly matched. So a lot of times I just let their imagination, I let, I let them close their eyes and exhale and just speak to me about it as a, you know, like what is, like I ask them the kind of questions. I'll, I'll give you an example, Maureen. Tell me if this, if you, if you, if this speaks to you. I heard from this woman that was diagnosed with breast cancer and she wanted to do a consultation with me. Now we were going to meet at Starbucks and go to this beautiful office. And I met her at Starbucks, even though a lot of my friends are not going to Starbucks. I want to acknowledge that. <laughs> They're upset about the recent <laughs> Starbucks incident. I want to acknowledge that. Um, anyway, she, I, when I went to see Maureen and Ariel and, and Miranda, she was in, she was the healthiest person in Starbucks. She was so radiant. So I, I sat down with her and I do this with my clients. I said, I said, I said, I said, tell me the story. Tell me what, what do you want, what you notice? So she suddenly told me a story that when she got this radioactive treatment, she felt like she was dying, but her sister and her mother wanted her to get it. And so I, she told me that story and I said, tell me another story. And I said, exhale three times and I want you to see another story. And this other story, was about when she's at a tree, the root of a tree, and the tree root is feeding the tree branches and the leaves are like coming in strong. And and basically I said to her, I said, okay, what I want you to do is I want you to see the other story fading in the background. And I want you to see this story that doesn't have a linear path yet. And let's touch base. And she changed the treatment protocol from the inside and kind of included her sister and her mother in a different way. And she actually wrote me to tell me that, you know, she, she actually didn't have that condition anymore. So with a couple, I'd like them to find this relational story and then let the other story, the, the count, this, at any moment we can only have two, star, two things happening. We could have a counterfeit story or we could have a vital story. And so what I like to do with couples is kind of have them be in this vital story where the counterfeit story kind of goes in the background and um, how does that speak to you? That sounds that sounds uh, a lot different than what we're used to seeing matchmaking looking like, I guess, right? Now, especially with the digital and the online, right? So it's just about, yeah. Yeah. Do, you, do you like dogs? Do you like to go barefoot, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yes, yes. It's so it's funny you say it, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Instead of where is your heart? You know, yeah, yeah, which yeah, is where it should yeah, start with, and you know, yeah, not uh, yeah, yeah. that. That's you know, I don't think that having everything in common is a requirement for not at all relationship, right? So if your souls not at all to each other, then yeah, that's so much more. By the way, you 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 got it so you got it, you got it so deeply. That's that's uh. Mm. Which so the idea is I wanted to do some of these in person in Rhode Island, and then I wanted to do some on Zoom. And I want to say it's such a beautiful thing. Here's the, the beauty, and I want to I want to I want to go to Miranda, talk about Miranda a little bit because Miranda and I have this deep connection, um, and she's going to become a coach. So I wanted to spend a, spend a little more, a few moments with that. Um, so what's beautiful is Marina, you know this already that. When you, when you get together with people and they're really there to kind of go beyond the known of something, like you just said so well, like so much of the, all those dang dating questions have nothing to do with, they have nothing to do with a vital connection. They're all kind of like, like chemistry and all this other stuff. It's like, does it really, it's kind of like, I don't know, it's like the outside of a white bread sandwich. It's kind of like, yeah, <laughs> but that's very different than having recognition and playing with this, this new place where you're together on the, the tree, like, like. I give people, I give people uh, kind of, uh, you know, metaphors. So the tree of life, the, the, a tree, when you're on the tree together and you feel this connection, 
you get to reveal this, this, if you will, this new story or this new energy together. And I also start, I also play with people that you don't get to know, you don't get to, you don't have to get to know someone that always kind of blows their mind. What you really need to do is recognize them and play from this other place. And it's a lot of fun. And I also love the idea of marrying people. So I kind of feel the blessing in my life, which, which was, you know, there's a chapter I'm writing. It's called from betrayed to be loved together. So the idea that I have is that people, when people actually come together, they resolve a heartbreak they might have had at another point in their life. And that new love, that, that beloving love, if you will, opens up them to another place that's beyond the known, beyond the superficialness that we both like, I don't know, a certain color of shower curtain or whatever these other questions they see, people seem to ask. Um, Um, people have t- almost taken for granted. You know, Maureen? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what I want to do, I want, I'm, and I'm so excited to be in Rhode Island. I wanted to share with you something along the power um, of collaboration. And also because the other thing when I, when I pondered this, I realized, oh, my God, imagine if couples could design their own careers together. So that was the next thing. I, I have a seminar now uh, for couples called Being Paid for Who We Are Together. Because I thought, wow, they all this, all this creative energy. So Miranda, Miranda Green, who's our vibrant writer, she's here. And I told Miranda that I was going to assist her in becoming a coach and mentor her, mentor her uh, so she could become a coach. And because uh, kind of like you, like you, know, you were in the bank all those years. Miranda's, you know, Miranda's 21 and she wants, she already instinctively knows she wants to touch people. And talk to people hard today. Right. Like Precious said, Ariel's going to tell us some kind of joke when we come back. I can feel that intuitively. <laughs> Feed your soul with waves of consciousness on Ohm Times Radio. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free ascendinghearts.com More than 24 million Americans have an autoimmune disorder and that number continues to grow. I'm Sharon Saylor and I'm one of those 24 million. To put that number in perspective, cancer affects about 9 million and heart disease up to 22 million. That's why I've brought together top experts and those thriving regardless of their diagnosis to bring you the latest, most up-to-date information. Join me, Sharon Saylor, Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, for the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio to find out how to live your life uninterrupted. Hey, Dr. Phil here. You know, I help people solve difficult problems every day, but one problem has me stumped, childhood hunger. Nearly 16 million children in America struggle with it. Luckily, the Feeding America network of local food banks collects surplus food, giving hope to hungry children and their families. But they need your help. Join me in supporting Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Hello, I'm Glenn Brooks. You're listening to the Vibrant Living Network. I'm a relational coach. I we work with speakers around the world. We have Vibrant Speakers International. We're talking to um, Maureen Clary from uh, Natural Awakenings Magazine in Rhode Island. Why don't you go and give out give out your your website, uh, Maureen, and let people know how they can reach you. And I know I know I want to recommend Rhode Island as one of the greatest summer spots ever. By the way, <laughs> absolutely. I agree. So the website is rinaturalawakenings.com. And uh, my phone is 401-709-2473. And, uh, yeah, my email is mcary 
at rinaturalawakenings.com. Beautiful. I, I love the phone. I, I love the... Uh... So sometimes things come in our lives beyond with, you know, all what people give us advice about. I want to just share one thing before we let um, Miranda come on. I want to go to Ariel just because it would be interesting to see what Ariel has to say, you know, just because. Sometimes it's just a because thing. So I had this opportunity. I'm flattered. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Ariel. Go ahead. Say something. Go ahead. You're right there. Say something. Yeah, so I've, I've been working with Glenn just on the vibrant, um, vibrant dating. It's something I also feel very connected to. And like what Glenn and what Maureen have brought up also, um, it's it's something we want to bring to people in order to really make dating less superficial, more uh, in a way where two people can meet each other and see on a deeper soul-like level uh, to try to make that connection on that deeper level as well. And uh, I'm looking forward to working with Glenn to build, to really, you know, get that, get that going to build it up and to really get, touch and influence you know, many, many people out there that really need it. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm uh, so, Maureen, do you remember a guy named uh, Mary Andretti? Yes. Okay, race, cool. So, race, auto, auto race? race but, but, exactly. So, part of, part of getting back to the about matchmaking, the Miranda, Miranda's taking some extra breathing here. She's, we're gonna, we're gonna have Miranda join us. She's gonna, she's initiating her coaching crew, they're having a special funeral for her, her job, by the way. She's going to bury her job soon, and she's going to move into this other life. So I like you, Marie. So I go to – okay, so I had this conversation, and this is – I want to say I've had hundreds of conversations, and I didn't realize this conversation with uh, Mary Andretti was going to be so in- instrumental. So I'm sitting with him, and he says this thing, and this, this developed me as a coach. So I'm sitting there with him, and I said, well, tell me. Tell me what it was like growing up. And he says, well, my uncles and my relatives would encourage me to race in the backyard. He had a big piece of property. And one of the things he said to me that really struck me, Maureen, he said that his, his, what he got early on was don't line your ducks up in a row. See, lining your ducks up in a row is a very linear way to think of life. And what he said to me was is he went beyond this mentality of lining your ducks up to really engage in play. When he said he engaged in play, he could see the cars in the racetrack. It was like it opened to him, and it went from like the size of like a, I don't know, a golf ball to a basketball. So he was talking to me about opening up his awareness. And what happens early in our lives, and this happens relationally too, people try to get around so much, create chemistry and all these things, and it's, it's very straining rather than, you kind of allow yourself to have an open focus and open awareness with someone else. And, and the outside questions miss that. So, by the way, so, so our, our, uh, with Miranda, who's with us, also our vibrant writer, there's going to be a picture of her. We're getting pictures of everybody on our website. Maureen, um, and I'm excited about that. I'm excited having our new website unfold. Our, our current website is vibrant, uh, vibrant living network, vibrant living network. So, so Maureen, I said to Miranda, like, yeah, she could transition, and we would share the journey with the audience. So I, so why don't I we welcome Miranda? We got a, we got a power collaboration team, and I said we're also going to share with the audience. They could go beyond all the assumptions they have about getting a job, and all the assumptions they have about what it takes and who you got to know. Like I thought this would be almost like a purification of being able to be paid for who we are. So I thought I would welcome you, Miranda, and let you share your vision. And, and also, I would say to people that, funny enough, even though Miranda chronologically is 21, she's probably one of the most atru- mature, awake people that I've ever met. Paradox, Maureen. Paradox. Okay. So welcome, Miranda. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> I need to put you on the so hot spot there, by the way. Thank you so much, Ben, for having me. I deeply appreciate you and everything that you are. Thank you. So, um, give you a little background. Um, when I was 15, I was diagnosed with Lyme disease, and that was a huge pivotal moment for me in my life. It kind of solved a lot of um, questions uh, and answers that um, my parents had for me growing up. And so, 
because at a young age I've had a lot of um a lot of physical and emotional challenges and it's pushed me uh it's pushed me and pushed me and pushed me into this space of surrendering. And um I started a journey of sweet, sweet allowing and in my allowance I started to heal tremendously and uh, when my light in me was rekindled, um, I had this innate, uh, I, it's, I don't even want to say desire. It was more than a desire. It was like this um, instinct, instinctual pull to remind others and serve on a deep level. Um, and uh, I realized the power of stillness and how extraordinary this deep inner peace was that I was able to cultivate this sanctuary of um, unbounded and um, untouched peace. And I saw in my friends and in my family and in the world how much that's needed. And uh, I also realized how, how much my suffering was necessary in the process as well. I kind of like to use the analogy that um, that uh, it's kind of like we, we're always digging holes in our lives, and so like you reach a point where you're digging and you're digging and you're digging and you're suffering and you're suffering and suffering, and then you finally reach life-giving water, and that's kind of my experience. <laughs> was that once I once once my face touched the water underneath all of this digging that I did. I was like, oh, I was like, it's, 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 you know, words are only attempts to describe um, experiences, but um, this, I have these huge heart openings of um, love, and um, there is so much unnecessary pain that we feel constantly um, due to our, our, our habits. And um, Lyme disease kind of, not just Lyme, but the the spirituality and the emotionalism and the mentality that came with it, it was a roller coaster. And um, it kind of, I felt like I was being chiseled constantly, chiseled and chiseled and chiseled. (laughs) And um, it it just kind of ignited something. Uh, I don't really want to label it, but it, 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 it... definitely ignited some sort of flame that we all carry, right? But this is just my experience and my unique expression of the infinite was this experience. And so um, I, again, have this innate need to, I guess, serve people on that deep psychological level. Um, Because true healing comes when you completely open yourself to vulnerability at its most rawness level. We are all raw. Our true nature is complete rawness and untouched beauty. And um, our birthright is liberation, and we seem to have forgotten that. So it kind of feels like a duty almost and um, a mission to uh, bring that to light in others who have some confusion going on and just need that little push because I'm not doing the teaching. You're teaching yourself. I'm just I'm mirroring you. So um, I really appreciate it. And then I, I met Glenn, and um, here I am. And it's been a beautiful journey of unfoldment. And uh, the biggest thing I've taken away from all of this is uh, the sweet, sweet pleasure and surrender. <laughs> and you would think that wouldn't be the case because – we like to control everything, but once I let go of control, that's when my whole world started to work for me. And so I just deeply desire to share that with others. You know, um, Maureen I, and Ariel, we came up with a name for this coaching. It's, we call it Inherent Health Coaching. Inherent Health Coaching. I was sitting one day at Whole Foods with Miranda, and she was going to go to the eye doctor because some of this impacted her physical eyes. And one of the things I realized, one of the attributes that she had, has, she kind of holds things. She kind of lives from this place of holding things from a context of health. 
And I realize for a lot of people they're battling and that's an unusual thing. And so she brings that, she brings this kind of way of holding things that allows you to see things and recognize your inherent health. Um, what are you curious about, Maureen? What are you, what are you curious? We had, we had, you, we had the honor of having you share your own health journey. What, what spoke to you when Miranda was talking about her journey? Anything got you curious or were you wondering about? Well, you know, I certainly, you know, thought that was interesting when she was talking about the giving mm-hmm. the, the control, right? And that we have yes. control. It's such an illusion, right? We, we don't have any control. <laughs> <laughs> That's an annoying illusion, yes. So true. So 100% true. <laughs> I'm with you on that one, Maureen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So being able to recognize that and to use mm-hmm. that uh, on the path to openness, that's, that's a beautiful thing. At 21, I wish I had been that brilliant at that age. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you know, it's funny you said it because when I'm around Miranda, it, it's like I have such a feeling of deep fa- – I always joke that she's my other daughter. So I, I always, When I reference my other daughter, Alicia, I say, well, your sister. Because I feel like I feel like there's this beautiful placement, right? It's right there. And then uh, the the illusion of control is such a tricky thing in life because it seems so dang real. <laughs> well, it right? is real. I mean, it's it's real because you feel it, right? But yeah. there's yeah. a reality behind that that's allowing that to be perceived. You know, so. I remember I was doing a series with a, 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 a anesthesiologist. And when the series was called uh, Waking Up to Your Real Health. I think we called it, uh, I used to call it the anesthesiologist who woke people up to health. Her name was Vita Barron. Vita Barron wrote a book called Meta Medicine. And she was the only woman in her village to become a medical doctor. She's pretty remarkable. I'm doing this series, right? And I'm thinking, oh, it's going really well. And all of a sudden, I, I go to see my other daughter, Lisa. And I was so excited to see her. She was like 15 months. I go over this rail. I missed the rail. It wasn't a good idea. I don't recommend this to people. I had, my wrist broke. <laughs> and I remember speaking to Vita at the hospital, and the surgeon said, there's no way he would want to have me conscious <laughs> during the surgery. And I just remember, like, that moment where I kind of felt like, oh, my God, it's just I need to kind of feel like I could kind of let go of this, this way of holding it. And it was, uh, you know, I learned so much from Vita. And yet at the same time, like, wow, those moments, yeah, the illusion of control and then, and then kind of merging, if you will, or connecting through the infinite mind that exists in us. I want to thank Kai. I can feel Kai right now. She's another, I want to say that our family, our, uh, Maureen, our, our, our vibrant living team is such a family. We have these meetings. I want to invite you on one of our meetings. We have meetings and we just give each other what I call golden feedback. And golden feedback in between letting control is the most valuable thing on earth because other than, other than that, you got to go rely on the on the counterfeit uh, control stuff. And it's, what's allowed you in your healing journey, Maureen? I know you, you got diagnosed with MS. What's allowed you? To, you sound so calm and, and rhythms. What's allowed you? What have you learned about dealing with control and allowing healing to occur in your life? Well, there was, uh, you know, there's an inevitability, of course. Uh, and one of the, and I'm always working with the, the calm. I uh, I have that a little of an illusion with that, and that I am calm on mm-hmm. the outside, and my inside is often <laughs> not as mm-hmm. <laughs> it could be a you know a different mm-hmm. swirling story. Yeah. So that is something yeah. I'm always working with, and meditation has been a huge uh, huge help with that. Just being able mm-hmm. to release and you know just sort of breathe through. That is, uh, I think that's one, and that, and then of course the the, the food, the nutrition is uh, you when you were talking, you know, with your journey with eating mm-hmm. and the no sugar, yeah, and recognizing yeah. the foods and the impact it has on how we feel, and how important that is. I think that's that's another important. Uh, and that is something we can kind of control, right? What were the choices yeah. that we're making? What, what what are we going to eat? Are we going to have a donut or are we going to have an apple? You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I want to I want to say to people, if you're interested in, uh, in Morgan's Magazine, it's a wonderful publication, Natural Awakenings. Um, 
And I want to say that if you're interested in being part of our Vibrant Living team or being a vibrant speaker, we're having an event, Maureen, I want you to come speak at and be part of. It's called the Vibrant Living Summit. And you can learn about it on our website. We're having new postings on Vibrant, uh, vibrant Living Network, Vibrant Living Network. And just, just because I want to give Ariel another 30 seconds to comment, because you just got married, by the way. You got married, so congratulations. That's a miss, that's a blessing. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I know. He, he's a married guy. He's newly married, Maureen and, and Miranda. <laughs> congratulations, Ariel. That's, very, that's exciting. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. And honestly, and without being so cheesy, honestly, it's applying like all these <laughs> principles that we spoke about with not like realizing that you're not totally in control and just looking at a relationship beyond the superficial really makes a difference. And I'm really looking mm-hmm. to share that with everybody as much as possible. I want to thank Maureen, Ariel B, Maureen the Green, you guys, Elijah Precious, and Joy. We're going to see you at the summit. We'll be sharing more about our Vibrant Living Summit. Environment Speakers International, the power of collaboration. And do realize that assumptions and conclusions are the poison of relationship. Begin again, and we'll be with you next week here on the Vibrant Living Network. I'm Glenn Brooks. Thanks for being with us today.